Welcome to Talking In Stations. This is a special reaction stream to a new industry set of changes that are coming through. This is, looks more like an overhaul than a set of changes. So we're going to talk to uh, some experts. We also have an open forum here. As you can see on the left-hand side of your screen, we have a list of people who are in our public discussion area. You're invited to participate. Uh, of course, if you misbehave, we'll throw you out. Uh, and we're going to be talking to some uh, industry guys and wormhole guys and people from all over uh, to kind of get our bearings on what these changes are, what they mean to you and your gameplay going into the future. This is a huge, huge change for industry. Uh, very exciting to see what's in there. It's going to take a long time to unravel it, but we're going to do our best right here a few minutes after it's been released. I'd like to introduce a couple people. We have Kenneth Feld with us who is a Pandemic Legion shipbuilder. He's um, not shipbuilder, shipyard owner. That's what I like to think <laughs> of you as. And uh, he also is on the CSM, and he is a massive industrialist for uh, Pandemic Legion specifically, but uh, you know he works in incredible scale. And he worked on this um, these sets of changes advising through the CSM too. We'll talk to him in a second. We also have Rich Richman, uh, who's part of TIS here, and um, he's going to be talking about some of the other changes in there as well. We also have Tiberius here with us. Uh, he's off screen, and he's going to be talking about some wormhole stuff. There's a group of people in here. You'll hear voices. It's an open forum. We'll have a discussion, but we definitely want to um, try to break this down for you. Okay. With all that said, let's get started with Ken. Tell us what's in this thing and what we're looking at. Okay, gee, I'm not really sure where to begin here, but basically, if it is a Tech One ship and it's in the game, besides maybe Edencom or Triglavian, the input materials are being changed. Now, I'm going to start off by saying right off the bat, battle cruisers and below, battle cruisers, cruisers, destroyers, frigates. Anything in that category, the price is actually probably going to drop and may drop significantly over time. The, 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 this update or this patch is going to make it, they wanted to decouple capitals from the small ships because before they all use the same materials. They all use the same materials and roughly the same ratio. Yeah. ratios so building a carrier was nothing more than building 40 battleships or I, i'm not sure the exact ratios i i'm i can tell you the titan ones but not for carriers but anyway but it was all ratios so now you're completely decoupled so anything battle cruiser and below is going to use different ratios of different materials from different places and all that should get cheaper they this is a lot of this is driven towards new player experience they don't want a new player to get in the game, lose a cruiser, and go, oh, my God, I can't afford another one. They want those to be so cheap and so usable that if you had a 10,000 versus 10,000 fight and you lost 50,000 cruisers in a day, no one's going to care. Like, okay, yeah, here's three is go buy 5,000 more type thing, right? So the barrier to entry for the low stuff is is going to stay where it is or go down that's the the prep or the you know that was the goal mm -hmm. now once you start getting into battleships and up um you know the the price for entry is going to get a little bit higher for battleships for everything else it's going to ramp up quite significantly um one of the things now let me let me preface all this by this plan was given to the CSM in probably October. I think it was late October. Um, there was parts of it I like, parts of it I didn't like. There's still parts of it I like and parts of it I don't like. Don't take my enthusiasm as 100% agreeance with CCP. However, it is what it is. It's what's coming. And the sooner you get on board and deal with it, the better your life's going to be. So that being said, they started looking at stuff that's not being used. They kind of made mention over it over the past few months. R4 gases. 
Two of the gases are used in three reactions. The other two are used in one reaction. One of them, the, the two are about 22 to 2,600 a unit. The other ones are 150 to 400 a unit. So they pick the ones that aren't being used. Hey, we'll use them on capitals. That way, when you mine them, your ISK per hour doesn't fluctuate depending if you're mining this gas or that gas type thing. So along with that, the wormhole gas, um, Tech 3s aren't being used hardly at all other than jackdaws pretty much. Um, so Tech 3 cruisers aren't being used. So a lot of that gas was not being used. Well, we can throw some of that in there. Uh, P4 PI. Well, the cloning change is going to mean much less structure spam. The war has meant less structure spam. Um, some other changes to the game have meant less structure spam. So there's less demand for P4 PI. So, well, we'll throw some of that in here. And then some of the lesser used P2, P3, PI, uh, we'll throw, sprinkle that in there and cobble it together, make some new BPOs, and that's kind of where we are. There's nothing in here that's been added that is a high value, high use, in demand item. So, so that, in that respect, it's very good. Yeah, and that's what they normally do. I think if you look at CCP's pattern of developing, they look for stuff that's just basically not being used and they want to create a need for it so that it can get used because it's usually attached to some kind of uh, other gameplay in collecting it. So it increases that end of the gameplay. Go and collect these things. They're now valuable. And it sops up, you know, whatever... Um, uh, it sops up like a need to make something more expensive because now you have other ingredients. So it's it's an interesting way. To make uh, to do a couple uh, solve a couple problems at the same time, uh, Kenneth, can you? Uh, is there any way to turn yourself up just a little bit? Because uh, I've got you maxed out, but I can. If you can't, I'll f try to fix it. Hmm, I can try here. Let's see. I, you know, I'll just put a gain on you. But oh no, how, how's that? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Sorry, I'm not very Discord literate here, so I <laughs> figure out where the knobs were. Uh, all right. So again, we're talking about industrial changes, what some of the uh, objectives were, right? What they were trying to get uh, accomplished. I do, um, I do want to talk actually about the difference between super capitals and capitals in this. We'll get to that a little bit later, I think, because uh, one of the things that I've noticed is in the past, they when they made the capital changes, they kind of made the super capitals and capitals a lot like sub capitals, just bigger. And now they're actually making some distinction between them, which I really like. But uh, Kenneth, go on. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Tell us more about this thing. Well, uh, you're exactly right. By, by adding different elements to capitals in general and then adding elements to super capitals, um, I don't think there's anything that's super capital specific. I think a carrier uses like one of them but you can decouple them from each other and from other ships in the game. And what I mean by that is you can change how many of this or that something uses and change the price dramatically without affecting the rest of the ships in the game. Whereas prior to this scarcity as scarcity happened, the price of minerals went up, everything was affected, you know, the sinking tide rises all ships or whatever that doesn't happen anymore because the ships all require different materials and there's enough levers that they can pull to change one aspect change the price of a super carrier and a titan say up 20 or 30 bill and not affect the price of a carrier or a, a freighter or especially battle cruiser and below whereas Prior to this, you could not do that. Uh, Kenneth, uh, pardon my interjection here. Am I correct in assuming uh, that the way that it seems that they're doing that is by they've adjusted the mineral value? They've reduced the amount of minerals required, but increased the amount of materials overall. So the P4 and the, uh, the Tech 3 slash hybrid reactions are the addition to the capital components. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sort of. It's it's kind of really, uh, I'll give you a Titan example real quick. And this is a lot of generality. So don't 
don't Kenneth said, brah, you know, <laughs> just, just, you know, so a Titan before would take about 3 billion trip. It would take about 900,000 pyrite and about 280,000 mechs. After this change, it's going to take about 600,000 trip, 2.9 billion pyrite and about 2 billion mechs, if I think roughly. So things have changed significantly. And if you look at before, the curve would kind of go like this from low value to high value minerals. Now it's going to kind of go like this. But along with that, they've added Arcanor and Bisto to every NullSec system about three months ago. Remember those little anomalies they put in there? Right. One That's the, the pyrite two, and mexalon. Right. The two biggest producers of, of pyrite and mex from ore is Arcano and Bisto. So you've got to look at the change in the whole ecosystem, right? They've, they've changed some things, and this is only the first domino. There's other changes that have to happen. All the redistribution, mining changes, Oracle changes that have been talked about uh, by some at CCP, and all those changes will build upon this initial dev log. So all that being said, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, I know the numbers, but I, I don't want to get into an actual number. But I'll tell you this, the price of a Titan before was 100% based on minerals. Now the mineral cost is less than what it was prior to this patch, but the addition of the other materials more than makes up for that and adds some on top of it. If yeah. I think that's kind of what you're getting at. But yeah, that, that's, that's what I was ratio, trying to ask. Yeah. yeah. The ratio of minerals is completely different as well. So you can't just say they took out some minerals and added some other stuff because they took out some mineral, minerals, added a ton more minerals, and then added a bunch of other stuff on top of that. Yeah, that's what I was. Uh, that's what I was trying to um, get to because I think that's what the question that was on a lot of people's minds was. Uh, you know, did the mineral value change? Where did it change? And uh, you know, how is it being made up for on the back end in terms of? Because uh, you kept on saying decoupling, and that's a fair thing to say, but I don't think a lot of people were really quite understanding well, what that meant. It, it, it's more decoupled from other classes, so. Subcaps are being decoupled from battleships slightly, just a little bit. But subcaps, including battleships, are being decoupled from capitals, and capitals are becoming decoupled from supers, so that all three of those categories, the prices can be adjusted separately by changes to mining or gas, that kind of stuff. And then as they mentioned in the blog, you know, tech two changes. Uh, let me let me read the thing because I don't want to I don't want to say something. The new update will be expanded to all tech two ships in the future. So that's exactly what the dev blog says. So, you know, there's there's more more dominoes lined up just ready to fall. So it seems like CCP is just overhauling the entire ecosystem of the game essentially, which Correct. is a, a, what a lot of players have been asking for for a long time, because a lot of this, uh, a lot of this was stuff from the game back in what, 2009, I think was, or 2010 was probably well, the last that. time. Ever. Yeah. Was, so this is, this has essentially been before this overhaul, this has essentially been the way of the game for, well, essentially since its inception. The last gigantic industry update was Creus in 2014. The last yeah. one before that was whatever the one where Warquels and Supers and stuff were all introduced. I think that was like 07 or 08. Yeah. I, anything prior to like 12 or 13, I get all confused on when it happened. All right. So again, for people who are just joining us because we've jumped up in viewership, like, can you go back um, and tell us again the what's in this new dev blog? It's an industrial overhaul. It's big. It's dense. It's going to take a while to work through. We're doing a reaction stream to get you some first impressions. But we're also talking to Kenneth Feld, who did a lot of consulting on this as a CSM member, as an industrialist. 
So uh, he knows it as well as any player out there. Uh, and so we're just going through the motions to figure out like what some of the repercussions are going to be on this. And so far, uh, I'll have uh, Kenneth go over the stuff, but so far one notable point is that um, ships that are smaller than a certain size will probably go down in price. Ships that are bigger than a certain price might go up in price as new materials are introduced into the construction process, especially on the su capital and super capital level. Uh, Kenneth, can you do a real quick review recap and then we'll go on? Uh, yeah, you pretty much just hit the nail on the head. Uh, battle cruisers and below, um, there's been some refactoring of the materials required for them, but they should, if anything, get cheaper. Um, new player experience, new players, that kind of stuff. CCP wants to make sure that they can get in a ship at any time. This shouldn't be a real factor. And, you know, big fights with zillions of cruisers no one's going to care if they lose them once you start getting into battleships then you start getting into some mainline doctrines you know those those losses should start to mean something um and and that's that's where they added in the new materials to differentiate the ships and go on from there Can just I to clarify is there going to be any new materials or minerals requirement for these builds, or is it stuff that's already available in the game? Uh, there's nothing. They did. They have not made any new magic materials out of thin air. Everything is currently in the game, and all of the new materials require. Oh, let me, I'm still working on this backwards camera. Excuse me. Um, all the new materials that are required for this are all materials that were already in the game and already being underutilized uh, in other aspects of the game. So they pick stuff, hey, we, we haven't had a, this hasn't been used in a blueprint in five years. Okay, well, we'll throw that in capital ships type thing. That way, there was no high demand high uh, item that's hard to get used to build these ships. Everything is low demand, and while well, there was plenty available, Jita's pretty much dry now but there'll be supplies available and that way it doesn't upset the complete economy just kind of reinvigorate some areas that have not seen some love in quite some time so like so, no no new bottleneck that'll stop production for anybody they picked stuff that's uh that's out there that wasn't being used much well just okay, to clarify until it gets used up until it gets used gas up. yeah just to clarify, right. wouldn't you say uh, battle cruisers and below? We're talking about Tech One battle cruisers, right? Like the Navy ones are. They're not going to see the price drop as you believe they will. Navy battle cruisers, Navy cruisers, Navy. Um, well, frigates. isn't isn't there a thing where you build a like if you want a Navy Omen, you build an Omen and you take it to the LP store and you give them an Omen and they give you an Omen back plus some LP and money and stuff so in that yeah, case, and some tags. If omen is cheaper then what you're turning in is cheaper so the price will drop by that much now as far as the blueprints if you just go there and buy a blueprint for lp um that well, is covered um and let me see if i can find this so it's tab four so if you look oh yeah those are all the navy issues right there um uh, can I share my screen? Yeah, please do. Just share your screen. I'll pick it up. There you go. Okay. So if you look here, now this is Apocalypse, Navy issue. Oh, these are only battleships. Um, but nevertheless, it does have the changes there for the Navy issues. And if it's not in here for cruisers and battle cruisers, they may be staying the same, or maybe that's something that we need to look at that was kind of overlooked. I can check. Nah. Uh, just, just one question. So there's not going to be any new materials, but there will be new components, like new blueprints. Yeah, oh, yeah. just to, just to kind of make that distinction, guys, uh, materials essentially means like um, the baseline stuff that you get from the game, right? So that's gas, that's ore, that's uh, reacted materials, ice products, um, those are all considered to be materials. 
components are the things that are going that are the new items that are going into the ships, not materials. CCP has not introduced new materials into the game that you have to go uh, farm and mine resources for. They have added new components that are required for the production of these of the Tech One ships. Yeah, and, you, uh, capital and capital components. Yeah, you make you, look up. you make materials into components, and then components into the finished product. Yeah, not not exactly, but if you look at my screen right now, it has all the new blueprints and reactions. So any of them that says gas phase reaction, that's a uh, the first reaction in the chain. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, it has composite reaction. That's the final output in the chain. That's what you'll use to build uh, in the builds. Uh, it also gives all the different blueprints and their skill requirements in order to build those blueprints. Um, the research times and cost has not been um, publicly made available yet, so I'm not going to talk about those, but this is what's publicly available. So as far as the component BPOs, the component BPOs are having some items added to them in addition to the minerals that was already required. But the hull blueprints themselves, if you look on... Uh, Kenneth, could you up the quality of your screen sharing, please? It uh, looks like Vaseline smeared all over. Oh, um, um, yes, pretty bad. Okay. Or maybe share a link of where we can find it for ourselves. Oh, domain. yeah, it's in the dev blog. Um, okay, yeah, Hillside. But if you look for a, um, oh, that's carriers and below. If you look for a super. The avatar takes basically the same amount of stuff roughly that it used to, but if you scroll all the way out here, then it has all these new capital core temperature regulator, um, the interlink communicator, all this kind of stuff, the auto integrity preservation seal, all that stuff is being added to the blueprint for the hull. So there's both. There's the capital components is having stuff added to them which is mostly where the PI and stuff comes from. Let me see if I can get to that. Uh, sorry, I don't have these tables memorized yet. Uh, is it here? Table seven. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So if you go here, then you can see that it's organic mortars, self harmonizing power cores, and there is some of the wormhole gas reactions that are being added here as well. But it's pretty minimal what's being added here. But then in addition to changing the components, they are also changing the hulls to, yeah, to add in all this other stuff, which are the blueprints that we were looking at on table four, maybe? No. Oh, I suck at this. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So there's the new blueprints there. So some of it's being added to the components. Some of it's being actually added, added to the hull BPO. Uh, one quick second for a program information here. He's streaming off his computer. There's a, you know, he's, uh, that depends on, uh, the clarity depends on many things. And so we're not going to get a clear picture on what he's looking at. So I am pasting the link of the spreadsheet that he's looking at. He's going to call out what table we're looking at, and you can follow along at home using that link. Yeah, sorry. I'm 2520 by 1440 so that yeah. may be part of it too well you just need to blow it up which is kind of hard it makes it hard to navigate but if you blow it way up uh, you'll have to move around oh. a lot more on, on the that. cog for the yeah. um screen sharing you should be able to change the quality uh, default to 480 you might be able to change that to 720 or 1080 on the discord your end uh yeah Kenneth, you should you should be able settings? To that. no no on the discord it's the cog it's okay we're going we're, yeah we're going to pass oh, where's it okay yeah, don't worry about it. Just people can follow along at home. Just call out the table that you're on when you when you're looking at something. Okay, I just blew it up to two hundred percent too. Hopefully that'll help a little bit. So I'm on on table three right now, and this is all the new blueprints and reactions that are being added. And it also has their output. Uh, the inputs are listed in the actual BPO sections in the tables, and it gives the time per run, copy time, and research time. Oh, it does have the research time. Okay, so they are available. And then so, it also gives the skills. 
So these are for new components that are going to be required for these builds? They're, they're not components. Okay, so um, hmm. they're, they're going to be required for the build. Some of them will go into the components that are already required. Some of them will just be added to the BPO for the hull. The components, when, I, when someone says components, um, I generally think, let me get back to the summary here. Yeah, when someone says components, I generally think of table seven, the ones that actually say components, because um, that's what I'm I'm used to thinking about components over time. The drone bays, jump drives, that kind of stuff, because those are the component BPOs. So those are being changed, and some of those blueprints and some of the reactions will go into them, and some will go into like an avatar BPO. The list of stuff required will get longer. And, and those things are also going to be required in like subcapsule ship building, right? No, no, uh, none of this will be required for subcaps. The only subcap that's getting changed is the um, battleships. If you look at table four, table four at the very oh, here, let me blow it back. It's up. like Sorry. Bible class, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, table four, if you look all the way to the right on the battleships here. Oh, okay. Uh, whoever was asking about the cruisers, we were just in the wrong section, but it does have the Exker Navy issue, Caracol Navy issue and all that, and it gives their mineral requirements. So the, the mineral requirements for all those are available in the spreadsheet on table four. It looks like the Navy, looks like all Navy uh, ships are getting the additional requirements of these uh, new additional items. Oh. Okay, yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me take that back. Um, faction ships will require some of the new materials in general. Um, even the frigates and the destroyers, I'm pretty sure, require them. Uh, yeah, even the even the Caldari Navy Hookbill requires some of the new new materials, and that's to. I, I'm I'm pretty sure. Let's see. No, yeah, their material requirements for minerals are a little bit higher as well. So they are probably going to go up in price a little bit. But the, the standard Tech 1 stuff will not. I guess I should have been more more clear there. When I say Tech 1, I mean just, you know, Merlin, Kestrel, Punisher, that kind of stuff. Not not the Navy faction equivalents. Even though, yes, I realize they're Tech 1. I, that's just not how I look at it from a building perspective. I see. So everybody who's looking to build their basic t actual Tech 1 run-of-the-mill stuff, uh, as long as it's not a battleship, everything sh should all be the same. You can still m make it with rocks. But the moment you want it to be extra special, you're going to have to uh, add that extra bit on. Correct. Does, Correct. You said that um, this is going to make T1 or these all-below cruiser ships considerably cheaper. Is that not going to cut you know, beginning industrial, let's say, or the market altogether? They already struggle enough as it is. People who start the game getting into, into industry or trying to build things. No, but, but their input also gets lower, so the profit doesn't change. It's like the skill extractor is going down, but the injector is going down at the same time, so the profit doesn't change. And, and on top of that, the idea would be that more of them are lost. And the more that are lost in PvP, the more people are going to need to buy. So and uh, as well. a I, budding I think... industrialist should, should be able to make their way just the same yeah i think you're thinking about this in terms of how things are currently not how they will be in the future with we still have to go through the shortage phase and finish off uh, the redistribution phase so in the short out. yeah in the short term maybe not but long term hopefully yes and in case people are wondering uh i believe these are only for the fact empire the four empires uh, tech one uh ships so Trigavians, nah you're you're screwed. You're going to have to get the new components. Uh, correct. They are they are considered factions, so you will get you will be required. But I think the devlog did say that they are lowering the build requirement for some of the Edencom stuff. Um, I know they're kind of underutilized, and uh, and so they kind of want to get them out there and get them in the hands of people a little bit more. Um, I haven't. Next stage question. 
So the faction cruisers and um, Navy ships will need those components, and those components are going to be built for new blueprints. Will those requirements for those new components be distributed differently? For example, on table two, I'm looking at uh, STAC, our trigger Neuralink conduits are required for like cinnable blueprints. Um, they obviously require uh, Neuralink boosters, pressurized oxidizers, and other bits. By the way, uh, just, all... go ahead, finish your question. Is, is, that, is, that, is that still PI stuff or is that some other thing that I, I, haven't, okay. I just haven't seen in the game yet? Okay, so that SAR trigger Neuralink conduit that you're talking about, that is a reaction. So it mm -hmm. takes those other items as an input to the reaction. And so now we have to go to table two. probably three. To table two yeah, has table, all the new components. Table two, SR trigger components is on right, 930. But, right. That's, that's what it takes. Um, so you will have to build those or react those. It won't be building. It'll be a reaction. And that will be an input to that hull. Now, if you're building hulls, when the patch goes, they'll continue to build. It only it only calculates what you need to build on the day that you press the button. So if the day before the patch you build 50 um, cinnables, then they won't be required. But the day after the patch or the day of the patch, if you press build, you'll need 50 of these new reaction materials or how many ever okay. required. So basically, CCP are bringing in the elements of like building T two T two ships to now faction and and uh, pirate ships, right? Correct. The same. The same type of workflow. Let's just go mm -hmm. with that. Right. Correct. And, and then hopefully this will also enrich people that have those low end moons. And, and... Exactly. Exactly. Ah, uh, okay. So it's basically giving people the uh, the new people the new players a chance to have that chance right right and, and they're they're also working, adding yeah. gases to every low sec and null sec system there'll be myco i don't know how to pronounce mito and cyto gas uh, i feel uh, like in pain. every system and in addition the pi although there's p4 pi used there's some p2 and p3 which are much easier for new players to make um those will be available and uh, for people to make as well as these reactions can be done with anybody who has the skills. And reactions is one way that a fairly new player can make quite a bit of ISK in game doing these reactions. That's great. I thought, hold on a second. I want to just point out that CCP Rattati, uh, who is in charge of the ecosystem, I think he actually might be a product, man product manager at this point. Uh, is in the audience. And so if you have questions and we don't get to them here, he may answer them there. We'll watch to see what he says and tell you as well. I thought the uh, gases were only coming to select parts of null sec, according to the blog, not all of it. And oh, it would it? be low sec that would have all the gases. Okay. Sorry, parts I, of null I may have misread. Well, the, I believe there'll be more gases in null sec now, but... Uh, I see all these ships, they're now going to have a multi-step process. You're going to have to fold up a piece of paper multiple times. And now, few, uh, so am I right in reading that fuel blocks and PI materials will be required in the production of anything above a, well, uh, anything that's not T1 and is always above a battle cruise in size? Correct. Yeah, and fuel blocks are just part of the reaction. That's They're just... When when reactions went away from pauses and moved into a more industry type setting, they added fuel blocks in because when everyone took down their towers, like I used to run a 180 tower reaction farm. Well, all of a sudden, none of those fuel blocks are being used for the towers. So the demand would go through the floor. So what they did is they added them to the reactions. So when you put in reactions, it requires blueprints to make up for the the loss of use due to the towers coming down if that makes sense so they're just keeping that going any reaction requires some fuel block this does complicate the production of any th of the more of the larger ships because now you have but uh, aside from the minerals which are fairly basic you now have a components that have and reactions that have 
four or three or four steps just to build into it? Uh, well, no, no reaction has more than two steps. It has a, a hybrid reaction and a composite. I see. So it, it may have, it may have up to four or five inputs, um, but the, it will only be a two-step reaction. And it's also also interesting to know, like the only capital ship, I guess that's that's not getting a change of in, in terms of the industry side, is the uh, the freighters. The, they require the exact same thing. I will tell you this. Um, I don't want to. I, I can't get into it too much, but the jump freighters, freighters, and orcas were probably one of the biggest. talked about items during this whole process. Um, we, CSM and, and CCP worked really well together to get them to a place where CSM was happy, CCP was happy, and, and there we go. Um, but yes, the, the, and I think the Orca uh, also doesn't require anything funny. Um, <laughs> funny. Right? I don't have the I don't have the table up and in front of me, but we tried to keep those on a more basic level, and I think the bowhead as well. We tried to keep those pretty basic, um, specifically because of how important they are in the game to move stuff around and allow people a path to get into capital production without going completely over the top. And we can argue about whether orcas and freighters are capitals or not capitals all day long. Um, some people say they are, some they aren't, whatever, but there has to be a, a path in, right? And that's the, that's always been the, the step way to capital production. And we want to keep it that way. I have a Is question for you. Question from, who is that? Condor has a question. Condor, go ahead. Um, Mr. Kenneth, I was wondering where at price wise is it going to put battleships, caps, and super caps? Are we in see like the norm being dread prices around a fitted dread around five five point five bill, or is it going to be more less? Where is that going to head as we look forward? I'm not going to get into prices because since this dev blog was put out. The prices have jumped probably a, a Titan has probably changed 10 or 15 billion in price just since this dev blog was put out because people are buying up pyrite, they're buying up the gas, they're buying up this, they're buying up that, right? So, and the other thing is, is you're looking at this in, in kind of a vacuum. This is step one, the first, well, scarcity and that kind of stuff were dominoes and this dominoes in the middle and there's plenty more dominoes coming. So what it costs today by the time the next dev blog comes out for, hey, we're adding ore back into the system, this is how you can get it. Now the price is going to change all over again. So a Titan could cost, you know, 800 billion is today. Tomorrow or Monday, a new dev blog comes out and says, hey, we're putting all this ore in anomalies. Well, now all of a sudden there's plenty of ore to mine. Well, now the price goes from 800 billion to 40 billion. Right now, I'm I'm using exaggerated things here because I'm not gonna I'm not really gonna get into numbers. But yeah, but I'm 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 just thinking six months. What's your feeling? Do you I, think it'll I be more or I less? Can't, I, can't I definitely can't talk about that. I, okay, that's fine. One, I know kind of know what's coming, but I don't know how fast it's going to come. So I definitely can't give you a time frame, and I certainly can't talk about what's coming. However, I can tell you that this is one domino in the chain. And every other domino down the line, as it falls and a new dev blog comes out, you're going to ask the same exact question, and I'm going to give you a completely different answer. So Fair enough. it's not, you know, there's, there is going to, we've already had pain. Scarcity has been pain, right? This is the first step to reorganizing the ecosystem from the inside out. And then how this gets reacted to will determine how the redistribution goes and so on and so forth. And then hopefully you come up to a happy medium where Titans aren't 40 billion anymore and they're not 800 billion. Where they sit in the middle, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into that. That's not, 
not for me to to really go into. But I hope that I answered your question. That so, answers okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Can I make an inference? Yeah, sure. Um, it's really interesting, right? Because I think CCP is trying to reduce the sand required to make the bottles, but have a, basically keep a hand on the amount of caps they can make. As in, I mean, the lids that sit on the bottle so they can minute, they control the, that growth. So the interesting thing that's going to happen, which I believe, is those who can make a run on those blueprints will make it advantageous. Those who have the industry or the Satoyos or um, those things who make those copies quickest is going to have the lead ahead. Uh, there's and, no. I, I would never build from copies, just so you know. No, I'm, I'm saying th those who initially get the blueprints, I mean the BPOs, because these things are going to need, need new BPOs, I believe. Yeah. Those who can, those who can make those. Uh, uh, but they'll be move. available from NPCs. You'll be able to buy as many blueprints as you want. Yeah, and they're mm -hmm. they're being seeded beforehand. There's this patch is coming in two phases, right? They're going to seed everything first, and then they're going to swap it over. Is this going to inv is this going to invalidate any previous blueprints? No. As useless. No. Will the R4 moon mining and the high sec gas reactions be doable in high sec, or is that going to stay in wormhole, low sec, and null sec? Um, you asked two questions there. Sorry, do you want to cover that? Well, yeah, as far as I know, they're not changing the requirements to do any um, reactions or anything like that. So all the, all the current um, restrictions will stay the same. Does that um, answer your question? Yes, basically it means a battleship can't be completely assembled in high sec. It, you would have to have some uh, low sec or wormhole or null sec spot to go do your reactions to completely solo assemble a battleship. So that will cause that stuff to be imported and exported to do production. Correct. Yes. If you want to vertically integrate, you will need something in null sec or, or low sec. Absolutely. Right. Now, uh, kind of, you, when you said that this will help new industrialists, I've heard a lot of talk about how the old industrialists and the old players have hoarded a lot of resources. With <laughs> this uh, introduction, this would allow them to, well, give them more power. Uh, is this what I'm hearing? To a certain degree, it will level the playing field. Um, and, you know, the T1 stuff is still on requires minerals. I would never build anything battlecruiser and below. Just, just if I build it in null sec, just by the time I jump freighted it to low sec, I've already lost disc, right? That's not even, that's not even remotely a concern of mine. Um, anything bigger than that, or when you start getting into the faction stuff, it's going to get real shaky because I don't know how this stuff is going to shake out, right? Um, how much gas is going to be available? What's the price of the gas? How long will it take to reach some sort of equilibrium? Again, the, the pricing thing, I can't, I can't help you with, but I can say this, that the, T, the, the stuff that's straight up T1, I think if a, a new industrial starts at the bottom and works his way up, he will have a path to grow and make ISK and continue in the game. Once he I reaches see. that, if he wants to go to faction or tech two or something like that, um, it is going to, there are going to be some things that he's going to have to think about, or you can buy this stuff in Jita. It all depends on over time. Is it going to be whacked out pricing or is there going to be enough of it made initially by people who can have the resources to go to low sec and build this stuff? Uh, will it be advantageous just to buy whatever reaction composite you need and then build your battleship from there? The, well, one concern I've had before I would consider going to industry is if I were to go into industry, I'd have to be competing against a lot of people who have already developed these things. But with this, uh, these reactions and blueprints, uh, I would always be able to find a buyer because you, well, pe you, people are going to be wanting to build these, right? I'll give you a, a a tidbit because I don't I don't do this anymore, but probably three or four years ago, 
one of the ways that I made the most ISK in game was building Tech 2 components. Uh, the stuff that you use to build Tech 2 ships. I Because you can build hundreds of billions of them, and they're only one cubic meter each. And I take them to Jita and sell. And a lot of that stuff had 100 to 150% markup. When the capital expansion came out, and everyone was building the Tech 2 fighters, the plasma thrusters for Mimitar and, and the laser lens for Amar and that kind of stuff, I made a little over a trillion ISK in six months just building those Tech 2 components and selling them in JITA. So there's little things like that that you're exactly right. These reactions, maybe low sec isn't your, isn't your jam there. But a lot of these blueprints, if you could buy the blueprint, build them and seed them on the market and get in there first, as long as the demand stays high, I think you could stand a chance of making some decent disc that way. Okay. Um, speaking of reactions, is the reaction stream to new changes that are announced? Let's see. There it is. It's called industry changes. They are coming soon. Uh, we'll see them phased in, I believe, over the next month. And definitely you'll see more stuff into the future. But as far as industrial changes, these are big, big, dense changes. They're essentially uh, mixing up or changing uh, the overall material usage of ships and uh, other things as well. So uh, big changes here. It's going to take a while to unpack all this stuff. We're doing our best to talk to... CSM Kenneth Feld, who's also a massive industrialist for Pandemic Legion. That's why you see the little logo over him. And um, of course, we have an open uh, open stream here, so you can jump in and listen directly, or you can listen on the stream either way. CCP Ritati and CCP Psych are actually in the audience. If you have questions, ask those questions, and they will get answers, probably from them or from us. And um, we'll continue on here, but we'll do a little recap. Uh, Kenneth, do you mind doing a recap one more time? Um, sure. Sorry, I was catching up on some messages there. <laughs> yeah, um, I bet. Basically, the, the industry change that's coming, um, Tech 1 ships, and let me clarify now, uh, Tech 1 battlecruiser and below that does not include faction. So Tech 1 only, no name after it, just Berlin's, Punishers, that kind of stuff. Battlecruiser and below, they're not changing, or the little bit of change that they have is kind of more designed to make them cheaper. Um, starting with faction and battleships, they're going to have a few of the new materials added to them to uh, increase the complexity of build and increase the price slightly. Um, capitals and above start getting into significantly more materials, blueprints um, in, in exchange for less mineral pricing although the minerals have completely changed around. The ratios that everyone knew for the past 15 years are completely out the window. Um, but the, the oh. amount of mineral pricing in going into a Titan is slightly going down, but then all the other stuff adding in will cause the overall price to go up as we speak today. You know, As things change, as the next blog comes, the next redistribution comes, then that will completely upset the, the Apple card as we know it today. But talking about today, that's kind of where we stand. Um, I just heard the cries of a million spreadsheets out there. How much, how much uh, reconfiguring are people going to have to do that have tools um, and spreadsheets? Well, um, that's one of the reasons that the spreadsheet is linked in the dev blog. Um, I pushed hard for that. Um, God, I don't know his CCP name. I know I only know his real name, but he worked really hard to put that together and uh, and get it in the dev blog. And that is the first step in that. Um, I've spent well over 300 hours since October working on this stuff and trying to keep the ratios roughly the same. Um, that's one thing that we we tried hard as a CSM to work with the CCP on to not make it to where, you know, carriers cost a billion, but Titans cost 600 billion because that's going to get stuff way out of whack. 
what we looked at now was kind of the ratios now, you know, five dreads equal a super, 25 dreads equal a, a Titan type thing. I forget the exact numbers, but we tried to keep those ratios roughly the same as they are currently. Now, the price on all of it may go up slightly or down slightly or whatever, but the ratios are roughly the same. Uh, and that's kind of that's kind of where we started work. CCP Rattati says something very interesting here in chat. He says the R4 moon minerals are the drivers to these changes. Is he talking about, can you talk to that? Yeah. Um, let me get to the, my right table here. Um, R4 moon mineral, uh, wrong table. Crud. Anyway, well, while you look for that. There's we'll, four R. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We'll, we'll get Rich to put up the table. He, he might have a like clear uh, picture, and then we'll keep your picture up. Uh, which table would, would you like? I'll I'm switch to, to us. Find it. <laughs> All right. Um, while you do that, Dante, uh, no, the the rigs are not affected from what I'm reading. And uh, as for how the market is reacting, I've heard uh, some people are flipping uh, prospects and. Uh, the gas mining frigates. Oh, the actual Don't prospects. Know why the... <laughs> surprise me. <laughs> the, the prospects are being uh, prospected. <laughs> okay, so so here's where we sit. Right mm -hmm. now, um, the silicates and evaporate deposits, there's four R4 uh, moon minerals, silicates, evaporate deposit, hydrocarbons, and atmospheric gases. Silicates and evaporate deposits are used for three reactions each. Hydrocarbons and atmospheric gases are used for two, or used for one, sorry. So what they did is they use atmospheric gases twice, hydrocarbons twice, but silicates and evaporate deposits only once. And those are for reactions that are required for almost all the ships. So atmospheric gases and hydrocarbons in GETA were selling for about 150 to 400 a unit, somewhere around there, ISK per unit. So basically free, right? But silicates and evaporate deposits were about 2,500 to 3,000 ISK per unit. So in reality, about a six times increase in price. But they were the same tier of material for, for moons. So now you're using them at a two to one ratio in this. Going by that, you would expect that the price of atmosphere gases and hydrocarbons would go up significantly may not equal silicates and evaporate deposits, but that's something that we can work on over time. Uh, the other thing is, if you notice on table two, the thermosetting polymer and the carbon fiber both require 100 on input and output 200. That's a normal reaction. That's what it goes. But the oxyorganic solvents require 2,000 input of each, and they're the ones that aren't used as much. So that's like 20 reactions at one time, and they only output 10 instead of 200. So you're getting 1 20th of the output for 20 times the input. That alone is going to cause a huge skew in the usage and hopefully bring them in line with the other two. And again, that's something that, that they can tweak over time. If all of a sudden atmospheric gases and hydrocarbons go to 50,000 a unit because you can't mine them quick enough. Well, maybe you can drop that to a thousand and go on with life. Right. So there's, that's why I keep talking about decoupling. All this stuff gets decoupled from each other and supers, capitals, and subcaps can all get treated differently. Well, they can still be built in high sec. They will just require some of these new materials and the new material, the reactions cannot be done in high sec. So yes, you can build the hull, but it will require something that is not able to be built in high sec. And in table 11, is, is it only uh, attribute changes or is it something else for the drugs? Yes, those are attribute changes for the drugs. Yes, uh, from what I've seen, the the attributes, the simp drugs are now doubled in power, which is uh, quite interesting because the simp drugs before were really weak, 3%. It's Now it's uh, up to 6%, which is 
uh, actually on par with well, it, it's actually somewhat competitive in use now. It could compete against, uh, say, Synth Exile and Synth Blue Pill. That can compete against uh, the hard shell drugs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, for, they're given away for free. They're very cheap and they have no drawbacks. So they're actually a great bonus to those synth drugs. Let's put a pin on that. They, don't, they might not stay cheap forever. Uh, what's, uh, Kenneth, what's going to be the bottleneck to the, all these new changes in terms of um, the reactions and the resources required? Do you have any idea? I have a gut feel. Um, I'm not going to talk about it much for the same reason. The other thing, because the next dev blog could come Monday, and everything that I think is a bottleneck today, on Monday, it's a different bottleneck, right? So there's no telling. I would imagine, I'll say this, the, the Myco to Sarin and the Cyto to Sarin gas, that's going to be the bottleneck if, Remember this. Uh, hold on, let me check. Does the dev blog say when these changes are coming out? Nah, sometime in April. Okay, so that's a month from now, right? Um, so we're speculating about something that's not even going to happen for another month. You never know. Some people could start mining that stuff today, and you know the, there'll be plenty of it available by then. But I think that's kind of right now would be more the limiting thing. Um, but again, by the time April comes around, there could be another dev blog where, you know, this is changing, that's changing, um, redistribution is happening. So everything that I say today may be a invalid come the middle of April. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's like you're talking about an ecosystem, right? Right, exactly. So right now, I would say if I had to guess today, I'd say there's two gases. But those gases are being added to every null sec or every low sec system and select null sec systems. So even if they don't get added until the patch goes, you know, in two or three weeks, um, people huffing gas, there's going to be plenty of, you know, I'm sure there'll be plenty yeah. available. So they, at least till the price drops. So to understand the complexity of asking, like, where's something going to land? It depends not only on what the demand pressure is, but also the supply. And then you have to like figure in how much do people actually want to do that gameplay to get that supply up. There's too many factors and they're going to change. Uh, so trying to figure out like where you're going to make a killing right now, I think you have to look at the broad strokes and make your own decisions. I'm sure there'll be some, uh, some definite changes. You know, th th there's going to be some big swings in the next six to 18 months. Yeah, no, they're not. So you don't think they're going to be instant swings. You think the big swings are coming over time, a year, year and a half. Uh, that would be my guess. And I have no idea. You know, mm -hmm. I, CCP moves at the speed of CCP. Um, but I would imagine that some of the changes that are coming are going to be, um, you know, first base type thing, you know, um, singles. Um, some are going to be triples. Um, some of them are going to be, you know, out of the park and smashing some car's windshield in the parking lot. And it, it all depends on what they put together, how they lump it together, how many changes they're comfortable doing at one time, how they think they can monitor those changes, uh, as to how it affects the ecosystem, that type of thing. And I don't really have too much insight into that. I mean, they give us a little bit of that information, uh, when we ask, um, but a lot of that stuff, they keep fairly tight to the vest on on the metrics for how the stuff is working out. So some some of that stuff, I, I may never know the real answer, um, but I'm sure that they look at it. Yeah, we also have Fuzzy Steve there in the audience, who is a former CSM member, also had a lot to do with uh, many of these topics that we're running up against today. So ask your questions in chat. We'll try to surface them here. If you guys decided to move into the voice channel and talking to stations. We're in a public channel here. You can come in if you want. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, let us know as well. Um, can I have, ask a question? Yeah, Hang Omeka on. Gold, former CSM member. How are you doing, Omeka? Go ahead. Yeah, fine, thank you. Um, so, well, this is less industry related, but the dev blog also said, um, that, or also reiterated on them, there's gonna be upcoming measures to um, counter clocky camping and um 
CC Perais and Ratari uh, several times said that with the cloaky camping nerves, there is going to be also introduction of some sort of uh, gameplay to preserve some sort of like amb ambush gameplay in Nalsec, right? So I was wondering if that's still on the horizon, if they still intend to do that, or if that's coming later, or maybe it's not on the horizon at all. And this is as much a question to CCP in the chat as uh, to CSM, if they can talk about it. Well, that was our meeting last Thursday. <laughs> like very, very days, relevant. Or yesterday. Yep. Uh, hour and 20 minutes, pretty much. Uh, All right. Uh, so you can tell me you met about this, uh, which means we, we have we have yet. talked. The CSM has talked to CCP about that. Yes. So the answer from Pratati, that's your answer from Kenneth, but from Pratati says it's on the horizon. I think both yep. answers kind of say the same thing. All right. Thank There's, you. There, there is considerable progress being made, for sure. In the blog, it does mention incentivizing capital. Or capital routing incentivization is that not part of the same deal? Hold on, I'm gonna have to read. Yeah, it should be part of the like same ecosystemic change basically. And uh, we we were also talking a lot about this in my CSM tenure, but it's just things get a lot of time. Things take a lot of time to get done, right? So finally, uh, they are on the horizon as well, which makes me happy. Okay, yeah, so um, what he says is uh, focus will go towards capital mining as well as the risk reward attention trifecta of NullSec combat anomalies to seek opportunities around incentivizing high risk, high attention gay plays such as capital ratting. So that's, that's all on the horizon. Yeah, that's exactly what it says. All right. I do wonder what it's going to look like, though, capital writing, because I thought we were moving away from that, right? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Um, yeah, because then there'd be nothing to hunt. If if no one yeah, ratted in supers, that's a good point. Would, yeah. So I don't. It's, that was part of the problem with blackout, in my opinion. You know, blackout happened. All the supers got put away, and no one wants to catch twenty vexers, right? You want to, you want to get that nice, big, fat, juicy kill. Um, so there, and, but there has to be significant risk out or reward out there for that, right? You're not going to take your super out to rat and make 20 isk per hour. So that's, that's all part of the ecosystem. You need to have enough reward out there that you want people to use their supers so people can hunt their supers and feed both types of gameplay, but you can't make them, let them make 2 trillion isk an hour and upset the entire ecosystem again. Right. It all has to be a balance. And that's we're, we're starting over at ground zero on the balance with the industry stuff. They've already done some of the ISK redistribution with ESS and the dynamic bounties. And then that that's been iterated on, I think, twice since it came out. And there'll be further iterations in there, as well as the redistribution of ore and stuff that's coming along the way. I have a question to Tiberius, who's in here. Uh, can you tell us some of the... Are, are you here, by the way? He's deafened. Oh, he's probably uh, not doing something in real life. I'll wait till he gets back, and then we'll ask some questions about wormholes and how that figures into things. By the question way... Question, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, go ahead. So one of the things that I've noticed immediately, and I'm not an industry expert, so I don't know kind of just from skimming the sheet what the M3 on some of these different materials are and kind of how complex some of the components are. But the way small scale industry has worked for small and even small to medium sized PVP groups in the past for things that we can't reliably import like T1 battleships and like capitals, you would be importing all of the compressed ore because you don't have people who are mining and building those battleships and dreadnoughts at location in an Asbel or a Raitaru or what have you to use in PvP. How much of an issue is this going to be 
for those groups that don't really have an industry wing. They have maybe a few people who deal with the importing of ore, building of cap parts, building of the dreads themselves. But when that supply chain now includes PI, which we all know isn't very movable across long distances, and includes a bunch of other things as well, are these people going to be able to supply the capitals and battleships that these groups need to be able to fight? Or are we now going to have to try and recruit entire industry wings just to support basic PvP? I mean, there's uh, always market, right? So, I, Well, I'll answer that in this way. I'm not going to go into specifics too much because you, you, you basically set a statement into a question. And, and you're, you're right. Um, it's going to be a lot more work to import and that kind of stuff. But who would have thought five years ago that PL would have an industry wing, right? Um, PL has thousands and thousands of characters. I'm talking about groups that cap out at 500 at like characters total or like a thousand. Okay. So if we, if we cap out at 2000 characters, then, and we have 20 industrialists, then you have 500, then you should have four to five somewhere in there. Right. Uh, I, I don't think, I mean, you can go to Jita. I, I was talking to Matterall yesterday, and we were just thumbing through Jita. There was like 70 Basilis, uh, 40 some Oneros, um, and and Jita is not the Jita that it used to be. It used to be you could go to Jita. Hey, I need 500 Munins, you know, 200 Basilis, 100 Scimitars, blah blah blah, and someone would just go buy them all, stick them in a jump freighter, and jump freight them to Nullsec. Th- those days are over. If you are an alliance of any size and any aspirations of real PVP, it's not going to be long to where I think personally, and I don't think necessarily the game is pushing you this way. Um, I think the the big players, PL, NC, Goons, Brave, Test, that kind of stuff, we keep everything in house. I haven't built for someone outside of PL in well over a year, and I'm not going to ever. Um, I'm not talking about null set coalitions. Well, hold on. Let me finish. So if we're only building for ourselves and I don't build any extra to put on the market, then the market's going to dry up. Now, there will be some people in high sec and they build. I got it. But to keep up with a 500 man alliance without making some um, backroom deals and that kind of stuff, I think think you're going to have a hard road to help. Okay. I don't, I don't think you're just going to be able to rely on the market period. Real quick. Want to say, uh, congratulations to our friend, uh, Olmeca gold on the birth of his first child, I think. Uh, so that's where, that's where he went to, he went to a better place. He's winning Eve by uh, doing something much more important. So congratulations to him. This is a Twitter announcement. Oh, thank you very much. Nice production there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> new, Speaking uh, of production. Nullsec pirate. <laughs> new Nullsec pirate incoming. Yeah, it's got those pirate eyes, I can tell. All right, well, congratulations. That's super awesome. Happy for it. Thank you. Uh, okay, so a couple of high-level... situation to real life. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that gear shift. Just needed to get that in there before... Uh, get uh, too involved. A um, couple high-level questions. This goes out. Uh, I won't say from who in case it doesn't want to. Um, is this a good time for a person to try industry for the first time? I love that question. What do you think? I think we kind of covered it earlier, but... Right. Uh, everything's kind of in flux right now. Um, I haven't built small T1 stuff in quite some time, so I'm probably not even the best one to ask about that. Um, with the dev blog dropping today, I would say definitely not in the next week or so. I would, I would not want to start then, but, um, I, I think the prep, the, 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 these changes coming is going to make it easier for new industrials to come. Whether today is the right time to start, probably not. However, um, it will be soon. And I, I think there will be a pathway for anyone to make uh, inroads into industry. Follow up to that. 
is how would you suggest a beginner get started these days? I, I usually say the same things. Um, ammo um, and frigates and destroyers uh, are, are always good places to start. Um, if you want to get into small time tech two, tech two ammo is a very good place to start. Um, if you go out and like he's talking about the low sec, uh, fly through low sec. That's how I actually got started. I got blown up by someone in low sec. Uh, my first day in the game, I went back into high sec, got my friends who got me into the game and we went out there and blew him up. And then he complained that he didn't have the money to replace a ship. So I was like, well, what do you have to do to build a ship? So then I looked at what I had to do to build a ship and went to Jita, got the stuff, built him a ship and sold him the ship <laughs> that we blew up because he blew up my ship. And that's how I started. Um, that's vintage. That was, that's vintage Kenneth Feld, by the way. That's how he reacts to issues. It's like, what, well, what do you need to do to fix that? <laughs> so... And that's how I got started. But I mean, the, anywhere, anywhere there's some something blowing up, someone's got to build a new one and just go from there. Kenneth, you mentioned in the past when some certain new components arrived, there was a bit of a rush to get them and you made substantial amounts. Uh, do you think this will happen in this case where people will be rushing to buy the the new components and there's an opportunity for people to tap into that market? and to well start supplying where there could be a bottleneck and where there are needs? Or do you think this uh, these new components will be fulfilled quite quickly? I, th I think it's going to be a double-edged sword. I think in the short term, um, yes, you could probably make it work. Um, me personally, I'm not going to go to G to buy them. I'm not going to go to G to sell them. I'm going to make them all internally for PL, and that'll be the end of it there, right? So you've got to look at some of the other groups who would be in the market to buy from Jita. How many would they buy? How fast can you make them? Can you get the materials to make them? And I think if you can get the materials to make them and there's still some groups that are having trouble getting the materials, I think you can always make a profit there. Um, especially the time between when the BPOs drop and when the patch comes. I think that's that's going to be your time to strike. Now, whether or not you can pay off the price of the BPO and start making profit, I, I don't know. But like you said, the low sec guys are going to go to G to buy the stuff and then assemble it in null sec or in low sec. There'll probably always be some sort of a market there for that. Whether it's enough to cover your costs, pay for Plex, that kind of stuff, I'm not sure. Long term, probably. Uh, I think if you want to make like a lot of money quick type thing, probably the next couple weeks after the after the pre-patch. After that, you'll probably make ISK, but it'll be normal ISK, not crazy ISK. Does I that see. answer your question? Yes, it does. Um, oh, since I've been in wormholes for about 14 months and ignored plenty of these uh, micro uh, Saracen sites, I will have to say to anybody who wants to get these, you do not need the Tech 2 mining frigates to get into wormhole gases. The Venture, nobody will ever be able to flip the Venture market. There's, so you'll always be able to buy a Venture, you'll always be able to huff gas, and uh, I guess I hope people will do start huffing these low-end wormhole gas sites, and hopefully they do become uh, a lot more value. Yeah, talk, talk to me after the show. We can make a deal. <laughs> oh, no. Not ISK. Okay. I have ISK. So um, those great questions that came earlier were from Carneros. That's why, of course, this person always asks great questions. Just want to get that in there. And uh, Who's a Fish says, I, I felt like those questions were directed at me. Uh, and they weren't necessarily, but, uh, and she would be a new, a new player. She's with TIS as well, but she also does, or she does a lot of the Eve Echo stuff. She's uh, active in Eve Echoes. But the, the point is the same. A lot of people who watch Talking In Stations watch it because it uh, opens up advanced gameplay for newer players or p players who want to improve. So we're hitting the right mark if you feel like that question is aimed uh, for you. All right. Uh, oh. I have a question to yeah. Billy, I guess. Yeah, um, go ahead, but Is, is this going to uh, impact the war at all or in any ways? It's always possible. Always possible. 
All right, we have. So is this one like each side like hesitant to move supers or anything like that, or is it still going to be the same? That's a question actually that Billy could probably answer since he's here. He's also on CSM and familiar with the subject matter for that reason and others. So Billy, your answer is just it's possible. That's it. I, I mean, everything can affect anything, right? The question is the devil is always in the details. And, you know, the situation on the field determines the reality of the moment. Um, will it affect the war? I'm sure it'll affect the war in some way or another. There's no doubt of that. Will it have, you know, will it help us? Will it hurt us? Will it, you know, greatly accelerate our progress? Will it greatly inhibit our progress? I'm doubtful of either. Um, you know, it, it's just the, the weather changing around us, I guess. Uh, Vili, it represents the side of the invasion that is invading. Pappy is the uh, group there. And, and it's the same for both sides, right? If if goons want to build a dread or Pappy wants to build a dread, exactly the same for both sides. So the person that has the uh, structures to do the research to uh, make the products is the one that's going to win, right? Well, you can have the structures and you can have the resources, but uh, if nobody's huffing the gas and nobody's uh, doing the PI, so probably should want to get on uh, to doing PI now if you haven't. Uh, if, but if nobody's able to supply those, well, because something's got to go so in and something's got to go out. Get a huffing. Well, there's well, a huffing and get doing PI. One thing I haven't seen mentioned. Yeah. Remember the last blog when they changed the ore around and the only place you can get trit is high sec and everybody's like oh my god every null sec alliance is going to have to have a high sec version just to mine trit well now instead of using three billion trit to build a titan you only need 600 million so the amount of yeah. trit that you need was cut down by by 80 percent so now all of a sudden you don't need that high sec arm right the next domino fell and it completely changed what you thought you knew yesterday. That's why I'm kind of not going into this too terribly um, detailed as far as that goes, because it's the same thing. The next thing that happens, everybody's going to go, Oh, well, every null sec Alliance has to have a wormhole division and we all have to go huff gas. And the next thing you know, Oh, where well, they're going to put that gas in null sec or something like that, right? I, I I just made stuff up there. Don't 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 count on that. But the, my point's still the same, right? The next domino falls and everything changes again. So don't don't get caught up in the in the in the weeds. More worried about the bushes type thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Question from uh, chat here. Can we ask one question? Hi, Pry. High prio, maybe priority, PI, planetary interaction, on EVE portal? Uh, that's a CCP question, I think. Uh, oh, I, I, I can tell you this. Okay, sure. Um, two, two things that I would, and, and the CSM has all brought this up to CCP. Two things, if I was in charge for the day that I would change is I would make your personal hangar shareable by ACLs, which will probably never happen because of things. And I would turn Eve Echoes or Eve Portal into a mini game where you do PI. That would be PI in the game would be an iOS game or an Android game, like the whatever, like Raid yeah. Shadow Legends thing, you know, where you just sit there and you yeah. work on it for a couple hours and push buttons while you're, you know, otherwise so, occupied um but that was how, that was how i that is how i would do pi in the game personally so you would offload That's it to a mobile me. device yep yep this i think that would certainly make it more accessible pi is oof. okay uh any more questions let's see uh can i make a comment on the acl point sure to be honest, that ACL idea is amazing and could probably replace the uh, corporation hangar control systems really well. 
Hint, hint. Okay, so back in 2014, when Citadels were being developed, they put out a dev blog in April of 2014. Somewhere around late 2014, early 2015, we got a sniff of the ACL system. This was in Tweet, tweet Fleet Slack. And the very first question that was asked was, can we share our hangar with our alts via ACLs and profiles? And it got asked every few days for the next year until the Citadel expansion hit. And the guy who was programming it at the time literally shook every time someone would ask him that question. I don't think it will ever happen. Um, if it did, there's a lot of technical debt that has to be taken care of first, and it would make permissions the next order level higher of crazy for stuff like Jeeve and um, ESI. And I think that's why, personally, I think that's why it will never happen. But uh, I never thought you'd have, be able to have 10 clones in a station either. So everything's possible, I guess. That's just my. It, you know, that's just my hope for one day it can happen. Okay. Um, there's a nice question in here from a relatively new guy. This is uh, Casfessence. I'll stick with that. Hey guys, as someone new to the game living in low sec, it is likely this is going to revitalize local PVP, roaming encounters outside of faction war space in low sec. Uh, what implications for low sec PVP do you think this will have? Me? Anyone? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I know there's a couple guys on the CSM that are low sec guys and would have a better their finger on the pulse of that a little bit better than me. Um, I know that. I can say the general sentiment is they don't like people blobbing up to mine and having giant super umbrellas. They would rather groups of 20 to 50 mine and that kind of stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, I keep teasing them and say, hey, it's just more people to shoot. So I, I, there's kind of, I guess there's good and bad to go with that. We'll we'll leave it at that. I'm not going to speak mm. for him, but but nothing in particular. Kind of there's generality. no there's no new resource. There's no new uh, point of conflict of something that needs to be harvested in low sec specifically going on with this rebalance. This is more of an industrial ingredients rebalance. Keep in mind, this gas is in no sec. It's not just restricted to low sec. You that um, it could bring more people there. But unfortunately, mm. gas huffing ships are so easy to kill and so easy to get away. What about uh, uh, um, Tiberius? You here with us? What about wormholes? And yeah, I'm here. Yeah, you want to talk about wormholes and how they're affected by this or in relationship to it? Yeah. So, um, you know, my number one concern about this issue um, is uh, that T three C that it, this is kind of like entirely down the line here. Um, this is. Personally, this is the last nail in the coffin for T3C viability because now with the rise in demand for the reactions of hybrid reactions that were typically exclusively used for T3 cruisers and T3 destroyers, uh, T3 destroyers are still going to be you know very viable. They're very well-rounded ships. But T3 cruisers, unless CCP's got something in the works that we don't know about, uh, this is the final nail in the head because they have been nerfed into oblivion um, over since they've been uh, since they've been released. They've been overhauled, they've been nerfed, they've been adjusted, et cetera, et cetera. And now with this, it's just now you're just essentially flying an overpriced, underpowered Tech 2 cruiser with skill point losses. Like it's not, uh, it, you know, the only gimmick that you can really acquire with these is that you can, uh, you can strip the uh, rigs without, uh, um, you know, losing them 
that you as you would on a normal on a normal ship and at that point in time it's like that's that's not that's and to me that it's not enough for for it to keep going on it was barely viable as it is now uh with some of the meta users and you know high class wormholes like hard knocks and everybody else who have kind of adopted uh legions over the past six to eight months or so um but to me this has pretty huge implications because it's just like well why am i flying something that has SP loss when I could just be flying something else that, you know, doesn't have nearly the same loss at this point. Um, you know, in, in the, it's a pretty dra- it some for the high SP users, it's a pretty drastic loss because, you know, we're talking a, a level five subsystem skill is 256,000 SP. That's, you know, and I think you lose about half of that uh, total value. So, you know, you're talking an entire large skill injector. So, um, anyway, um, yeah, I, th- I think it's time to get rid of the SP loss. So, you know, the, yeah, so that, that's my personal, uh, that's my personal opinion on that. Um, what I am positive about is that, uh, you know, we're probably going to see a, a much larger increase in activity in, uh, wormhole in wormhole space uh, most of the gases that are being used in these reactions are low to mid-tier gases which means that they're found through very easily through c1 through c4 space um they you know ccp just recently adjusted the way that gas spawns where they they have twice as much gas per site but they spawn 50 percent less um so i can definitely see opportunities to gank these ventures and other or whatever the other two ships are called um i can't remember off the top of my head prospects Prospects, yeah prospects and ventures are the two gas huffers that you can use um i could definitely see that being a positive um you know on the flip side those are pretty slippery targets and kind of hard to catch considering the warp ins on those is usually about 100 kilometers off of where the gas sig is but if uh You know, you have ventures and people who are just scanning up chain and doing a wormhole dive aren't paying attention to descan or if a new SIG pops and, um, you know, then all of a sudden they just get blasted by, uh, you know, scary wormhole people. I think that's totally great. I think that's, uh, you know, the way the wormhole space is supposed to be uh, played. And I think that offers new uh, incentive for people to go and explore gas sites. Uh, in wormhole space because you know data relic sites have lost their luster and appeal over the past you know two to three years i can't remember when the last when that last big update was when odyssey was um my brain's not working this morning but anyway um so they they've it's definitely exploration has lost its luster and appeal i feel like to a lot of uh you know, new players in terms of the risk to reward benefit. It used to be that you could make quite a bit of money doing those uh, doing those sites, but you can't anymore just because of how flooded the market is. So um, I think that was great. That was something that some, uh, you know, members of the wormhole focus group were really asking about was a vertical integration into the um, production scheme of, you know, case based doctrines. Um, that's, I felt was a, just a brilliant change and I'm really looking forward to, um, being able to make that money again. Um, I think that, uh, the, and everybody else being able to make that money again. Um, I think that, uh, the R4 moons changes and, uh, in reintegrating those back into tech one production, I think that is also great. Um, you know, one of the things that has been lacking, I feel like in wormhole space in general, has been this opportunity for residents to make money. Um, now, with the current scarcity issues, and uh, this is kind of going into wormhole um, economics right now, but count now with the current scarcity issues that we're facing, um, you know, uh, making money in wormhole space is very uh cost prohibitive to a lot to a lot of people um you know rattlesnakes 
good rattlesnake fits cost almost a bill. Um, a single dread costs about four to five bill, depending upon how you fit it. Uh, you know, and if you're running two or three of those in order to, you know, make your um, isk, you know, that's you're fielding 15 bill, which is, I guess, a good risk reward factor. But, you know, it's pretty cost prohibitive for a lot of these guys to be able to fly certain heavy armor doctrines, which is what we you know have typically flown in the past, which is big ships that have 150 to 250,000 EHP and slugs that last anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour um, on 50 on 50 combat. And, uh, you know, I, it's just been more and more cost prohibitive for some people to, uh, to get into these things. So um, I feel that wormhole residents have needed a boost in their ability to make money and since in wormhole space you can run these reactions, the you know the R four reactions inside of an Athenor or Tatara, whatever your flavor of choice, on top of being able to run the hybrid reactions and then dump it onto the market, um, is a great intermediary for uh, players who are looking to make the jump into wormhole space um, without having to risk a ton of isk. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think I think overall it's a it's a pretty pretty good net positive for uh, for wormholers and wormhole space in general. All right. Well, thanks. By the way, uh, the Odyssey expansion was June fourth, two thousand thirteen. Wow, that's so it was even longer ago than I thought. Yeah, that's so a long time almost, ago. Almost as almost eight years ago. Yeah, it's a big expansion for exploration, so that's why uh, it was cited earlier. Um, uh, real quick, mm -hmm. uh, one thing I've been go going over, all of the inputs for a battleship are all going to be blueprints, so they can all be done in high sec. However, some of the inputs to those blueprints are reactions. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of difficult. It, if you just want to build the blueprints and you buy everything in JITA, then you can just buy the reacted material. But if you do want to vertically integrate, you will need to do a couple of small reactions. Right now, I would probably say that would be less than 3 or 4% of the total battleship price. So it's not like you're going to go, oh, my God, that's the end of the world as far as industry goes. But if you do want to build every single thing yourself, you will need to do a reaction. But if you just want to get the blueprints and build the blueprints, then every all the inputs for the blueprints uh, will be available, I assume, in JITA, and you will be able to build them all in high sec. So it's kind of kind of the same, but kind of different. Depends on how you want to look at it. Yeah. Well, that's great. You're watching uh, Talking in Stations. We're looking at uh, the new changes that have come out. Dense changes. It's going to take a while to unpack. The ingredients to uh, to ships and uh, items are all being mixed. Uh, they have new requirements for capital ships and uh, just a whole new way of doing things for industry. It's important that you actually read the blog, look at the spreadsheet that was put out. Uh, it's connected to the blog and uh, and get familiar with the changes that are happening. Uh, there's other parts to this dev blog as well. I think we were going to talk uh, to Rich about those. Do you want to introduce that? Sure. I believe at the end of this blog, it mentioned uh, a certain few changes, uh, which I've uh, highlighted on stream. They'll be changing the dynamic bounty system, as well as uh, hopefully releasing the mysterious keys to the ESS reserve bank, some of which are, I believe, over 20 billion and the CCP has recorded 8 trillion ISK sitting in banks all across uh, New Eden. And uh, new tools to can potentially combat uh, cloaky camping. And uh, incentive to rest well bring back uh, people flying the big expensive ships, the capitals, to when they go out to mine in Nolsec. And uh, carriers and super carriers uh, when it comes to ratting. They're trying to find a way to restore that back into the game and uh, incentivize people to do this because uh, a tackled carrier is most certainly a content generator. A tackled super carrier is even more so. Yeah, agreed. All right. Um, uh, any questions on that? 
So do we know the numbers of how much Super Rang has dropped since? I have um, no idea. The, C, the CSM got to see those charts the other day, but I'm, I'm, I would be shocked beyond belief if that was ever made public. Right. Uh, the closest thing that the public gets to see is the monthly economic report, which just came out for February. So you can look at that under dev blogs as well. And that shows you NPC ratting. Uh, anything that a supercarrier is doing will be divided between uh, the numbers in super carrier, super, sorry, NPC bounties. Uh, so anything that a super capital ratting ship does will be there. Also, uh, you might see there might be a, it's hard to read now because uh, if you watched last week's show, we'll, we'll tell you why the uh, NPC bounties are a little better than they were, but they're still not a perfect indicator of what's going on out there because of the complication of the in, uh, encounter surveillance system, the ESS. That function takes 40% of the winnings of that supercarrier redder. And depending on what happens, he may or may not get that back. If he gets it back, it's counted as part of NPC bounties. If he loses it to somebody that stole it from him, I believe that is not considered NPC bounties. It, it might be. And then the stuff that's in hold, that's being held at the moment or for long-term uh, ESS function, those are not counted on there. So it's really hard to get a picture. It's even harder now than it was before. What I'm reading here is that you will be seeing a... Uh, what's this? Increase in the time to the auto pay contributors and a decrease in the time to require to link to the main bank is what I'm uh, apparently hearing. Yeah, it sounds like a reversion back to the previous setup, whereas it was initially, what, five minute link and three hour timer, and it went down to two hours and six minutes 30. So it's probably a reversion back to three hours and five minutes, roughly. Interesting. Uh, so what we know initially was that the ESS were introduced and it was a heyday for people who were looking for, to steal money from NullSec ratters. Then really quickly, unusually quickly, they made an adjustment to make the window for that shorter and they really kind of favored the ratters. And what they were trying to do is get more ratters to participate because they started saying like, hey, this is not worth it. So I'm just not going to do it. That's what we assume happened. And now they're reversing that and, and changing the dial back towards the people who are coming to get, uh, coming to steal your winnings because those guys said, well, it's not worth our time anymore because the window's too short. We can't really get there or whatever. So I imagine they're going to be moving that back and forth and back and forth until they find a healthy balance. What I am happy to see is uh, they're actually going to release the ESS reserve bank keys because... I believe in some, in some spaces are worth as much as a super carrier and everybody, a lot of people have wondered, have wondered oh. when are these keys going to be released? When are we going to be able to rob this? When will we, uh, will we be able to force a confrontation? And uh, I hope that eight trillion S goes down real quick because uh, everybody's got plenty of time to perfect their ESS fighting meta over the last uh, few months. I think the defense of the ESS is going to be difficult now with the Marauder changes, right? Because they can just oh, take yeah. that in, right? That changes oh, yeah. the whole game massively. And with because it's a dead space grid and it's a scram bubble, Marauders are... Well, to, if, to fight a Marauder, you pretty much need another Marauder or you need to completely overwhelm it. Uh, this The ESS meta... Uh, I think it's shifted between, at the, at the very start, people brought whatever they wanted, and then there were different things like uh, close range and trying to overwhelm it, people with close range, high DPS as soon as they came in. There was a meta of uh, long range sniping ships. Uh, there was a... Santa ships were obviously certainly, certainly used. I believe there were also metas like um, having either long range or short range ships backed up with tremendous amounts of uh, support. So it's uh, the meta for the ESS is is there's been plenty of time to develop it, and people have tried all sorts of things that have uh, succeeded and failed in different scenarios. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, well, a confrontation because there's there's banks yeah worth as much as a supercarrier, and whoever loots it gets not only the loot but also if there's a confrontation, any ships they destroy wow. and the items they drop. Well, Rich, the supercarrier uh, worth might change uh, now that things are 
influx. Mm, yeah. Maybe not. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any other questions, we'll collect them now. We're at an hour and 40 minutes, so we'll go at the very most 20 more minutes to you know, round this out to a two-hour presentation. Is it, this your, is a reaction stream to the industrial shakeup that's happening now. Ba basically, the materials uh, usage for ships and some of the processes are changing, but there are other changes that are wide-ranging. So uh, it, it is uh, complex. If you don't understand it right away, keep reading the blog. Keep talking amongst yourselves. Jump into Talking in Stations. Ask your questions. We have a help channel. Any question thrown in there is answered usually within a few minutes. It's uh, I'm kind of impressed with how fast... Uh, people help each other out on TIS Discord. Okay. I'm concerned about the new Intel tool now. What is this going to be? Is this going to be a newer near to, or will this be a way to, I don't know, stop a, uh, somebody from cloaking? There's not a lot of information on this new Intel tool against cloaky camping, got cloaky operations. The only thing oh, I Oh, yeah, they did, they did put that in the blog. That's exactly what it says. A new Intel tool is also coming. So can Do you have question. an idea? Oh, he yeah. has an idea. We yeah. had an hour meeting on it <laughs> yesterday. But he's not saying the, ideas. The blog, the blog is pretty clear. It says a new Intel tool is coming. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it says. So is it that fancy structure sure, that hear, they... Um, tool is coming. One, one it, at a time, is please. It, is it the fancy tool that they were talking uh, that structure they're talking about in the fan fest thing like quite a few years ago? It doesn't say structure, it says tool, which is interesting. There the is a Intel new Intel tool, tool coming. coming. That is all yep. that I can say. Yep. It's coming. We can't so are we, gonna, we can't eke any more out of them. And uh, it's an Intel tool. Yeah. Yep. It's a tool. Is this a near two? Is this a new Eden? Uh, I, I, to be honest, I, I think it's going to be like this 3D animation of a sonar detector tool. You sit there and go beep, beep, beep. Who knows? Uh, what I'm voting for is they take the little radar thing off the top of the rattlesnake and stick that on the top of a keep star and let it spin around. There you go, CCP. Aurora just answered your question. There is a new Intel tool coming. <laughs> so, there's God, I love her. Yeah. Uh, okay. Shall we do like uh, any more questions? Go ahead and put them in chat or uh, ask them here. What is uh, incentivizing high risk, high attention gameplay? It's they're trying to incentivize uh, oh, well, capital mining and uh, capital combat anomalies. What do you think, what do they mean by incentivizing? How do you incentivize it when you have the well all these things that have disincentivized people to make money in Nullsec recently? Is this an increase to payouts? Is this... What is this? He wonders aloud. Uh, you know, I want to ask Khan, are you able to talk there, Khan? You are, unmute yourself. Okay, may have walked away. Right? Yeah, I'm here, what's going on? Oh, hey, I don't know, have you had a chance? This is Estrella Khan from uh, Damlin... What is it, damn fam? Uh, my question to you is, have you had a chance to look over this dev blog yet? And if you have, like what your thoughts are on it. If you haven't, we'll do it another day. I have kind of looked into it a little bit. Um, I haven't really got a chance to look into it that much because I am at work. But the biggest thing that does kind of attract me is the uh, revamping of the art. Fours. Um, that is something that kind of, you know, it was like a ping point for me. Because, um, you know, that being rearranged gives that that whole mood or like a more value than the party is getting current. All right. So the R four is something got you uh, curious. You're gonna look at that since you do a lot of mining. Such as from C acting OC. Such a hard one for me. Um, I'm pretty much. Done. I'm just I think he went on to a different conversation. <laughs> right. uh, I think Philly might have. Or is that Philly? I don't know. Like, was. That was Philly, I think. Sorry, I muted the wrong guy. Okay, um, another person I would want to ask here is Jan Jan Jensen. He's a NC dot pilot, longtime player. Do you have any any thoughts on this industrial 
shake up. Yan Yan, are you there? All right, we'll assume he's gone. That was his chance. Uh, okay, so I think that's all the questions we have now. I think people need to read this and then uh, start talking. I'd like to thank uh, uh, our guests here, especially Kenneth Feld, who uh, explained a lot of it. Go over the la We'll go over it one more time here in summation, and then we'll we'll leave here. Okay. Um, general, the general idea is anything battle cruiser and below that's tech one, not faction. Their requirements to build are basically staying the same, maybe a little bit less. Ratios of the minerals are changing slightly, but the idea is to make those ships cheap, easily replaceable. Um, no one will will care if you lose twenty cruisers in a night type thing. Um, faction. This includes Triglavian and Edencom, and battleships and above are having various items added to their build process um, to um, kind of separate them out from others to decouple the building process. In the past, um, all the T1 ships all used minerals. So if you increase the price of a cruiser, you would also increase the price of a Titan. But by decoupling and adding extra requirements in for battleships and above and the faction stuff, now you can start adjusting the prices for classes of ships. So you can adjust the prices of battlecruiser and below by just adjusting the amount of ore that's in game. If you want to adjust the price of capitals and above, you can adjust how much um, R4 moon goo is in game or gas, wormhole gas, something like that. You can adjust the amount of gas that um, the little, the high, sock, the high slot modules on a venture pull in or the bonus on the venture type thing. And then you can adjust how much gas is in the game. And that will adjust the price of Titans, supers, carriers, and a little bit on battleships type thing. So there's, there's plenty of knobs there to turn to make sure that the battle cruisers and below stay affordable by all and can be easily replaced by new players. And then the complexity and the price goes up from there and all of it can be adjusted independently. Yeah, that is fantastic. It's ingenious actually to, to do that, to put battleships and above on a different track of multi layers of ingredients instead of just straight up minerals. And uh, what I also like about that, it has the added benefit for the ecosystem of creating more important, uh, more gameplay for people. So if you want to go in uh, what we call huff gas, which means go and absorb gas in a gas cloud, like that's a viable profession now. You can go and do that because there's more demand on that product. There may actually be more supply, more opportunities to do that as well. And that goes across the board with PI and the other things that are involved, the other added ingredients. What's surprising to me, Kenneth, is I assume this was going to happen because this is kind of the way CCP develops. Uh, they don't come at a problem straight. They come at it from two different directions or three. But I thought this would just be super capitals that were going to get this kind of uh, added ingredients. There, this is going to be battleships. No, that, that's a Sorry, I had a hard time finding my mute button there. Um, yeah, the battleships, it, the total cost for this is going to be a few percent of the total battleship build. So you're talking pretty minor. Um, it will allow them to adjust it in the future if they need to, but it is definitely not a major component by any stretch of the price of a battleship. Whereas once you start getting into supers and titans, the new materials are a significant portion of the build and that and the carriers dreads and facts it's a it's a decent portion and that allows them to be able to adjust all of those categories separately um, by turning one knob or maybe two knobs mm -hmm. and not affect the battle cruisers and below so and it will also allow for many different like in the past rich you're, you're a wormhole guy in tiberius I, did you guys ever huff gas 
No. Yes, a tiny bit. Oh, did. A, a, a tiny bit. Okay. No, Which, I, I have gas a lot. Right <laughs> oh, okay. Well, some people do. But for the most part, you're <laughs> going to say most people run those sites with the three dreads and the Weber or whatever, because that's where you make the is the blue loop, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's correct. that's definitely the way that people make the most disc in the game correct. right now. For the, least, uh, for the, but now there's a chance it. that other stuff could open up, and you may have day trippers going in. I don't know. Is gas in the shattered wormholes? Yes, they are. There is. So, so that could What's... be a, a, a real viable option for day trips in the shattered wormholes because the gas is pretty small, right? It's not. It's not really huge. You can get it out in a blockade runner, right? Uh, no, it's actually quite voluminous. Oh, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's decent size. <laughs> I don't do a whole lot of Tech Three production, so yeah, it's, it's that's the big bottleneck actually with Tech Three production is that it's uh, it's very voluminous. That's one of the reasons why it's expensive is because you can't compress it. Weirdly enough, gas can't be compressed, um, and uh, it does require a quite a bit of uh, logistics to get out of it. But uh, that's a topic for a different time. So continue your thought. Okay, the but- smaller. Sorry, the smaller size wormhole. Uh, a lot of the work, there was only one or two specific gases that we ever really mined, and the the rest we just ignored. Uh, on other news, less than fifteen minutes ago, Hobo Leaks uh, has just been dropped. Changes are in. We now have an idea what's going on. Whoa. Can anyway? Well, uh, uh, sorry about that. Can, uh, well, continue, uh, hold on. Let's for I... fans that don't understand what Hobo Leaks means, it's a comparison of the old database with the new database, and therefore you can see all the changes. And you can pinpoint where things are changing and by how much. So it's it's basically looking at database files that are being inserted into the test center. So it's a really, really advanced look on what the where the rubber is hitting the road on changes. And that's why it's a big deal. Okay, you're you're missing a significant thing here with Hobo Leaks. Hobo Leaks isn't gonna have much more than what's on that Excel spreadsheet. But if it's on Hobo Leaks, that means it's on Sissy. The test center. Yes. And that's right. where you'll be able to go in and actually look at I don't know if Sissy's up. Let me check and see if Sissy's yeah. up. I have a Hobo Leaks uh, open up on stream. Can you put right. okay. Um, but but Hobo Leaks is basically gonna have the same thing as the as the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, it's gonna yeah. have all the change BPOs, that kind of stuff. So you won't get more but, information here, but what you're saying, Kenneth, is if you get into the test center, you'll be able to start messing with the stuff. Correct. Oh, and I haven't logged into Sissy in so long that all my passwords are long, so I got to relog in. Oh well, but um, uh, but yeah, but it, it when Sissy comes up, um, all that stuff should be on Sissy, and you'll be able to to play with it, test it, run the reactions, that kind of stuff. Cool. All right. So there's no advantage right now to looking at CC and uh, sorry at uh, Hobo Leaks and getting in there and. Because all this stuff is basically on the spreadsheet that was uh, released from... Correct. Uh, yeah. Correct. But it does give you an idea of uh, what was it like before and what is it now. Because that wasn't exactly covered in the Excel sheets. It, they just gave you a number what it is now. Right. Yeah, the red, is, the red strike through is what it was. The green is what it is now. So for your... Oh, it does have the... Uh, the changes to Edencom stuff on there, the four time projectors and that kind of stuff that wasn't covered necessarily in the blog. Cause that was a separate, a separate thing. It's not holes, but they did say they were going to change the materials and that is updated on there as well. The uh, changes are not on CC yet. Oh, they're not. Okay. No. Well, the, yeah. Sissy will have to, whenever they, whenever they restart Sissy or whatever. Well, what's hobo leaks available. based on if it's not a public, uh, like what, what's it? What's it based on? What's its source to compare to the new the build tranquility to singularity builds, apparently. Yeah, to singularity CC. So if it's not on CC, what are they comparing to? Uh, the static data export, maybe. Maybe what I mean, will just... be on CC? I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't know why it would be like that. Uh, it downloads the patches, ah. the patches up. You just can't log in. Ah, okay. So it's there. You can't log in. Okay, hold up. Oh, okay. So, oh, crap. I don't know his CCP name. He tried to say it in chat. It may be Paradox. Um, he just wanted to let you know that the changes going to Sissy do not include battleships and above. They're going to they're gonna go on Sissy later. 
So, um, oh, okay. So right now the singularity patch only shows what will be live in the first release in April. So not the, only the new BPOs, not the changes to current BPOs in game. So like the avatar BPO will still be an avatar BPO, but the, the new reactions and the new blueprints will be on system. Does that make sense? Yeah. The sub components that you build ahead of time. Right. But the components that we currently have that are having PI and some other stuff added to them, they're not going to change yet. Uh, they won't change until, uh, the next update to Sissy. Mm. When you say the first release in April, you mean it's releasing in April or it's releasing on April the 1st? Hopefully not mm. as a joke. No. Oh, crap. I may have said something I wasn't supposed to. Oh, we just, Does it get, we just got you nuked. Yeah. Oh. There's, there's two. I'm pretty sure that one. I thought that was public. Er. Yeah, okay. This update will be split into two different phases in April. Okay, so the first phase, whenever that happens to be, is going to include the new blueprints, the new reactions, and that kind of stuff. And then the second phase is changing all the stuff that's currently in game. Does that make that make sense? Yes, yes, it does. Yeah. That's oh. from CCP Paradox that you were just reading. No, that's from the dev blog. Oh, uh, oh, I see. Okay. Oh, but the but the what's on Sissy now is only the first phase that came from CCP Paradox. Yes, he's he's listening a lot. Oh, there he is. He just yeah. He just put stuff in purple. Yeah. So, but that's I just wanted to clarify. So, what you're seeing on Hobo Leaks is what's going to be on Sissy, and that's only the first phase of the update, which includes all the new stuff, but no changes to the current blueprints. Got it. Okay. Oh, and uh, Revendahl there, uh, so he's a longtime player, says, I can log in on CC. So I guess that's opening up now. All this to say, very soon you'll be able to look at some of the stuff on the test center. One thing I'm going to caution people to is uh, you want to build the new stuff, take a good hard look at the skill requirements because the skill requirements for some of this stuff is pretty steep. As someone who has you know, a couple dozen pilots with 30 million in science, I'm not terribly worried, but um, there's some people who um, are probably building tech one now and want to dip their toes into some of this stuff. And there's some pretty healthy skill requirements in the science category. And they are on, I think, table two on the Excel spreadsheet as well. Uh, yeah, I've got it up. We'll definitely look at uh, so you're three. looking at uh, science fives, molecule, uh, yeah. and various engineering skills. Correct. Yeah, there's some there's some heavy hitters there that uh, you need to be aware of before you you venture out to start doing it. The right. enhanced Neuralink protection cell. That's the one that's mainly for supers and titans. And yeah, it's one, two, three, four, five level fives required to build that. Uh, yeah, I imagine they increased the skill requirements since a lot of those science skills were only ever used for percentage improvement improvements in percentages when you were doing uh, invention and stuff. Oh, that's not necessarily true. Um, like to fly a hick, you got to have the whatever some graviton physics level oh. five. Yeah, so there's some Four. there's a few yeah there's a few tie-ins, but but not not a terrible amount. I mean, considering there are like forty different skills there. I think there's only a few. Graviton is one of those, yeah. But but for the most part, those skills I don't think were that useful unless you were a, a like a you know a T two Invention. builder, yeah, T two yeah, builder. I, th I think there might be a, a typo here because it lists nuclear physics but doesn't list a number. I'm assuming based on the fact that the others are five that it is also nuclear physics five. So uh, a lot of these uh, ones at the bottom, yeah, they're stacked. You're gonna What's your yeah, skill points? Have, oh yeah, okay. I'll I'll ask on that nuclear physics, but I'm pretty sure it's it's five. But uh, I think earlier uh, somebody said one of the devs said in chat. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is your grace period to uh, get ready. Correct, correct. And and the CSM pushed hard for this to have a, a, you know some time between the pre patch and the full patch to get the BPOs researched that kind of stuff. 
and to get this dev blog out as soon as possible so people can look it over and prepare for the pre-patch even to uh, to get their, their stuff in order if they want to continue to build. All right. Well, we've been at a couple hours. It's just a reaction. Uh, we are stumbling through uh, figuring out what's in here, but Kenneth's able to give us a lot of guidance on what the what the meaning of this industry change was, what the purpose and tensions were from CCP. And uh, it looks pretty complicated. Uh, any last thoughts, uh, Kenneth? No, uh, so I'm, I'm still taking it in myself to a certain degree. You know, as people bring up questions, you know, stuff I've not necessarily thought about. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would imagine it's going to take most people quite some time to digest. The first time I saw this back in October, it took me the better part of a weekend locking myself in a room to get a firm grasp on what was going on here. And uh, I only had about a third of the data available to me at that time. It was mostly supers and titans. So. Um, you know, it's, it's going to take some time. Um, the SDE being available should make a huge difference. Oh, um, what's and the maybe SDE? Fuzzy can, yeah, yeah. Sorry. SDE. Maybe fuzzy can talk about that. If he's still in chat about, um, someone said it might've been updated for the sissy stuff. I'm not sure, but, um, maybe he can talk about if he's looked at it to see what's available and if he's going to update Fuzzworks so we can start looking at this stuff on fuzzworks is the and, uh, sorry uh, what is the sde there. is the software development no um, what is it something data export oh okay um so it's data for third-party okay. tools right so f yes fuzzy said it's converting right now so he has to download it and then he converts it to something and puts it somewhere and then some magic happens and my hands are all going everywhere and then fuzzworks works so okay. i would imagine probably a couple hours or so yeah, static so it's, data export. That's yeah, it. static data export. I think I was thinking yeah. stat, um, software development kit, which is different. Right. Yeah. So this you you would take a software development kit and use the SDE to populate it with all the data to make it work. I guess I'm not a computer guy, but anyway, <laughs> once he gets it uploaded, then you should be able to go to Fuzzworks and hopefully Lazy Blacksmith and those guys will will get on it too. Uh, you should be able to go there and type in the new blueprints and actually look at what you need to do to build them in game as yeah, soon as however long that process takes. Now you can start to study like uh, what you actually need to do to change, to evolve. Oh, okay. Fuzzy said he's not updating the blueprint calculator, but I'll put up a new copy. So maybe he'll put up a beta blueprint calculator. That's what kind of what it sounds like. And then if you want to look at the new stuff, you go to the beta version. If you want to look at the stuff in game, you go to the, to the regular one. That would be really cool. Thank you, Fuzzy. Oh, good work there, Fuzzy. Former CSM member, Fuzzy Steve. Also, Fuzzworks. Uh, is that the website, fuzzworks.com? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. Check out So that. and Yeah. He... He he kills it every time. It's man, I would have a hard time doing industry without his site. I helped him a lot in the beginning, especially for the capital building and that kind of stuff. And uh, he has a function there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug this because I, I I love this function. I use it all the time, and most people don't know what it is. So you find something in game. You you pick up a widget somewhere, or someone gives you one, trades it to you, or something. And you're like. What the hell is this? What is this used for? You can go to Fuzzy's website and you click on the material use DB database and you type in what you have and it will list every blueprint in the game that uses that item I as an that. input. Reverse yeah, engineering. That is it, yeah. absolutely the most useful tool of any website for Eve anywhere. Just a thought. If you put... I'm going to call it an ingredient in something you can harvest or create. Uh, and if you do that, if you look up how it's used, what components it goes into, what um, end products it goes into, you can start to get an idea of the demand pressure on that item. And that allows you to figure out if it's worth working with it, harvesting it, building it, buying it, trading it, whatever. If a lot of stuff is changing, 
is going to go to one component, that's something that you should uh, jump on. It's an opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, what a big uh, show here. Two hours of talking about these new changes. Thank you very much, Kenneth, uh, Rich, Tiberius, and everybody else that jumped into our open channel here. Everybody behaved very well. Very happy about that. Thanks very much to CCP, who is out there, uh, also answering questions and playing along in chat. That was very helpful for everybody. And thank you for being interested in in uh, people's concerns and jumping in and answering questions. Okay, last last chance for any last thoughts. Make it quick. I was going to uh, ask a question, but uh, it seems like you're wrapping up, so I'll hold it. I've, I've got a thing to say. Go ahead. Uh, next Monday, CCB is going to have a stream, and you can uh, send in questions about uh, this topic. Yeah, we'll get information on that stream uh, so that you guys make sure to see that. Rundle, uh, if you just got here, go ahead and ask your question. This will be a PS. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I've been asking, I've been watching. What I didn't see covered was, I guess, uh, if uh, Kenneth could give any indication or the CCP people of um, resource islands. That's uh, my biggest concern where, you know, wormholers will have more you know, value and whatever. I just want to make sure that there's been really good care and attention to creating uh, resource islands. Any um, comments on that? Yeah, that's a that's a couple dominoes from now. It's it's redistribution is coming, and I think that's kind of what you're getting at is where you're going to be able to get what and how they're gonna how how it's gonna shape New Eden to make sure that we we don't end up where we were a year ago type thing. Yeah, and, uh, or even it, thinking it, farther back, right? I don't want the I don't want the moon scenario where just one moon gives you the one material, and uh, either it's an island on the map or you know, something is only found in wormhole space, and now, you know, only those people get the money and the riches, sort of right. thing. So, so this is the first in the in the series. You know, we had scarcity, and then there was a little bit of redistribution with the ISK, the ESS, and dy dynamic bounties. The next thing that should be coming would be redistribution of ore. But before we got to the redistribution of ore, um, we had to make these changes to industry. So that we could start decoupling the subcaps from the caps and the caps from the supers. And the next thing that will be coming, you know, sometime will be redistribution of ore. And, you know, of course, there's a few extra added um, things here. The dev blog talks about the gas a little bit, but I'm sure that that stuff will all be touched and iterated on as we go down the line, much like the dynamic bounty has already been touched two or three times since it started. Um, but this is a, you know, going to be a delicate process of, of balancing going forward. So, and we're, we, there's still plenty more dominoes to come. I know that's right. not the answer you're looking for, but that's about, the no, best I, I think that's fair. The, my biggest concern is at least it's being considered and there's element, you know, the, it is part of the equation of the changes, right? And I'm all right with high distribution areas where you get the majority of something from somewhere, but it shouldn't be an island unto itself. And so. Uh, you know, it, it, we well, see uh, those. Isogen and Nox are only available in low sec. Um, right. I don't see that changing, at least not, you know, th there may be other avenues to get it outside of there, but it won't be a significant portion. But it'll be in all of low sec, not just like the Forge low sec. Exactly. Yeah. And I think then that that's fair, more risk, more reward. And I'm I'm totally cool with that kind of flow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for the thanks for the answer. Can I do one last thing, Kenneth? Thank you for making that spreadsheet available because my keyboard will thank you and every other spreadsheet player will thank you for that. So, And and you can, I think, oh, man, I don't know these guys, but I think CCP Psych um, is responsible for putting that together. Um, I, I helped him a little bit. And, um, God, I don't know the other guy's name either, but it was a, it was a concerted effort at CCP to make sure that got together and got in the dev blog. Um, I, I specifically asked for it because I really think it would help people and CCP wanted to do it as well. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I never got any pushback um, uh, to make this stuff available because this is a lot of information to digest and it's in a form where you can copy and paste and put it in your own stuff pretty easily. That was mainly where I helped to make it some format that people would be able to use going forward. And you know them by real names, real human names. So that's why you don't know CCP names. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Once again, uh, why don't just plug that CCP stream? Uh, this is why uh, we couldn't drag Ritati on or even have him on Sunday because they're going to do his own stream on the ecosystem Monday, the 29th at 17 UTC, 1700 UTC. So check out CCP stream on this topic. Ask them your questions and uh, do your homework before that session so you get some good questions in there. Hey, right. uh, one quick thing to yep. Fuzzy. He's asking about the SDE. Dude, I hear you. I, I told, I, I reiterated many times how important the SDE is on patch day to be updated, ready to go so that the online tools work. And uh, uh, hopefully there won't be any hiccups. But I appreciate you. I use your site all the time. And I know it doesn't work without the SDE. And uh, I'm glad they got this one out. And hopefully the next one will be out ahead of time too. And you'll be ready on patch day. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us uh, for this Talking Mute, In Stations. Uh, it's actually just muted here. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on Talking In Stations. I think this is a good time to uh, let people know that we've done a lot of work with Kenneth here. And uh, another person that we uh, did a lot of work with was Elise Randolph, and he is now part of CCP uh, as an actual community developer. He is CCP Swift, so we're super happy for him. Unfortunately, because he's gonna be doing that role, he won't be able to talk like he used to talk on Talking In Stations. If, if we have him on, he'll be a representative of CCP, so that will change. So congratulations to Elise. Uh, but uh, in exchange, I bartered with the gods, and we have, uh, C <laughs> we have CSM Kenneth joining TIS, so we'll have more stuff from him coming, especially in this period. It's going to be great to have Kenneth talking about industrial issues on a regular basis at Talking In Stations. So thank you. And uh, thanks, Rich. Thanks, Tiberius and everybody else. Rundle, uh, we will see you guys later today. At, uh, in a few hours, you'll see the Euro show. And then later today, you'll see the uh, Friday edition of Newsday, where we'll be covering a summary of what happened here. Thanks. Take care.